lot of people interested on what you did to the Corvette to get it to drift. Can you tell me what you did? Well, let's see. So we made a bracket for the rear of it so we could do dual master cylinder um, or calipers. But after talking to Chelsea, that sounds like it's a bit of overkill unless you're unless you're just trying to win FD. All of his cars he has an inline, and for some reason that bad mamma jamma can get it done. So that was a little overkill, but we got it done. And then we did an angle kit on it that just basically kind of like cut knuckles on an S14. We just relocated the pickup point, moved it in about two and a half inches and just built a bracket that hooked onto the ABS system and and in through the old pickup point and then got some chromoly um, heim joints and extended the uh, stock. Anyway, yeah. Uh, what about the handbrake? What handbrake did you buy? Bought an ASD handbrake and put front calipers on it off of a stock off of a stock car off a stock Corvette. So the handbrake works super super good. <laughs> degrees somewhere in there of steering angle. Seven and a half inch wide tires on it, pretty narrow, but real just off a stock Corvette off the front. Um, some 230, two, 235, 35, 17s to get them all to clear with two and a half inch spacers to get that wheel out there a bunch. And uh, yeah, it worked, it worked pretty good. It wasn't amazing by any means, but uh, it's not the stock power plant either. The motor made about 400 horse to the wheel. So that definitely helped a lot because the stock power plant. What was team. what was done to the car before you turned it into a drift car? It was a road race car. Had the guy bought a brand spanking new and put all he wanted to race it, but the ZR1 wasn't allowed in his class. So he bought a Rex ZR1 and put all the ZR1 suspension underneath of it, which is really not applicable for drifting. It didn't. It just made it stop better and handle just a little bit better. But you could make it drift just as good without that, those pieces. He just did that for road racing. So I had Corvette ZR1 brakes on it, upgraded brakes, which uh, definitely made it stop a lot better than any drift car on the event. And then your dad bought it from him? from some guy in California, or Vegas. He won four years in a row. My dad bought it, and then he had it for a handful of years, and sold it to my buddy. How old were you when your dad bought it? I was 18 years old, my dad So did it. you work on it? Oh yeah, I worked on that car, and I autocrossed it. I raced it, I got many a top time of days in autocrossing when I was just a young kid. And then he bought another car, and sold that car to my buddy, and it sat in his garage for like five years. So one day on the ski hill, I just said, uh, well, what are you doing with that car? And I thought I better buy, buy it back up. So we had it sitting in the garage. And then one day I went in our, on a ride in a drift car in Vegas. And I was like, yep, that's it. We're building a drift car. So and that was my first platform. I didn't know nothing about it, but we just made it happen. And it worked pretty good. It's definitely not as good as a 240SX, but uh, it, it, it was pretty rad. It worked really good. Super fun. Yeah, way fun. And what did you use it mainly for? 
drifting. Street drifting. No. Oh, wait, we don't do that. No, I don't see um, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was too obvious when that but, thing would go out on the street. So, so yeah, so it was my car. So it was your car after I bought my new, this new thing right here. So Rudy bought this car from... Uh, Jeff Lansdale. Jeff Lansdale in California. Because I didn't want to spend $10,000 on another power plant and more angle when I bought this car for 10 G's. So I got this car with an LS1 ready to go for 10 G's. So then all of a sudden, I had two cars that were capable cars and my car, my wife could drive at that point. So, yeah. Cool. This is the angle kit that I built. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, pictures of it beforehand because my phone burnt in the fire. But I got the information from Matt Field and put this together. Basically, it's like a cut knuckle on an S13.